Good morning from my side. My name is uh, Holger Jorba and I'm coming from uh, Trelleborg Seeding Solutions. Originally, I'm a German guy, so I will start promptly on Water 2. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> I will stop at least half past. <laughs> We will see how much fun we can have in the next uh, time. Uh, I will present uh, something which is uh, for some of you who are used in, uh, let's say, discussing seals. Some of you are used in discussing seals and issues with seals. I see yes, 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 yes. Maybe something which, uh, yeah, if you read the lubrication management, what do you expect? Looking at fluid cleanliness, no. lubricity, no. no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Some, some more opinions. So we, we, we give in a title, yeah? A title is uh, something you read and uh, you say, oh, I'm interested, or you say, oh, what does that mean? Yeah? So I can imagine that lubrication management, uh, lubrication everyone knows. And management, I guess everyone knows too. <laughs> But both things together, what does that mean? No, no uh, thinking in that direction? Optimize the lubrication of the same like that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe we will come into deeper things uh, during, let's say, some slides. And uh, I will simply start with a little bit history. History is uh, what, uh, yes, we have a good uh, average. I'm not the oldest, I guess. <laughs> And uh, we have, let's say, experience. And we start with the experience. Uh, how did we start not going back to, let's say, the Greek technologies? Yeah, the inventors of hydraulics, we can say. <laughs> uh, going a little bit in the modern time, and then uh, we have, let's say, hydraulic systems, which we simply seal by a V-pack or a packing which is uh, something, technology, which is still used today in some applications. The idea behind that is to press something hard enough, strong enough against something with the effect of sealing. No idea on what's happening in, let's say, a sealing area, no idea on lubrication maybe. Lubrication in this case meant at the end leakage. So there is a very close relation between lubrication, I only talk on lubrication, I'm the seal guy, clear, <laughs> and leakage. Yeah? Whenever we have lubrication and the lubrication will not be transported back into our whatever system, we do have a lubrication which is a negative thing because people talk on leakage. How do we solve a problem with this sealing systems when we have too much lubrication coming outside? We increase the stress. We increase the stress. Yeah? So mechanical pretension. From a today's view, wow. <laughs> the next step would be welded yeah? and close. Yeah? <laughs> what do I want to say with that? Ceiling and efficiency. This is very important. Yeah? And uh, today, these systems are only in use where no one cares on energy consumption, on friction, on efficiency. These systems are, from my knowledge, in use wherever some legislation needs that. Water hydraulic applications, some cases are known. Yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, let's say, from the historical side. I compress something as much as I can to seal. In the mid of the last century, there was a material called rubber coming up also for seals mainly O-rings or square rings. And uh, with the rubber, another technology in principle came up, which meant uh, we did not have anymore a mechanical device to compress the rubber. 
the rubber was compressed by itself, by the pressure fluid. So this was a hydraulic activated seal, the first hydraulic activated seal. No discussion on, let's say, geometry, which follows then, today still, the most used seal already. Very simple, round and black. You think so? Round and black, yes. Simple, no. <laughs> but maybe not today, yeah? <laughs> uh, to have, let's say, this uh, rubber material with the benefit that I can transport the energy, a seal material, I struggle again with the rubber efficiency friction. Lifetime extrusion. A gap. Uh, what is a gap? Ooh. My material goes in the gap and disappears. So what was the next step uh, to put, uh, let's say, this is a little bit Trelleborg uh, technology also, uh, history, okay? To put, let's say, someone in the team. So now I said the first time team. Team will be repeated several times today. The team was then not only the rubber, but someone who was very good for, let's say, sliding properties. This was a fluopolymer. We called it a PTFE compound. Huh? So the first PTFE seals, the so-called slipper seals, in combination with an O-ring, we still sell it. And we, are, we have other suppliers on the market who sell it. We call it double delta. The benefit on this one is uh, very thin, and you can install it in the same gland and an O-ring. So we have solved the problem of, let's say, wear, efficiency, yeah, friction. We still have the elasticity. Now, everything OK? No. Now we come to the next point. We come to, let's say, oil transportation. And then technology goes to a family. So this two, you have to view together with, let's say, a geometry in the contact area. We call it, uh, let's say, specific asymmetric contact pressure distribution. Who can seal asymmetrically? What do I mean with that? Seal is seal, yeah? tight is tight. Go back to the history. Yeah? Clever sealing is to have, let's say, uh, oil film transportation with, let's say, the tendency that more oil can be retransported into the system. We call it hydrodynamic back pumping. To get that, we have an asymmetric contact pressure distribution in the contact area. So every modern seal, dynamic seal, has a seal edge, which is uh, as sharp as possible. The she uh, seal edge has, uh, let's say, different angles from the pressure side to the low pressure side. Why? Right? Seal gets pressure, then that will come back. Yeah, the oil film thickness yeah, is, uh, let's say, related to, let's say, the contact pressure distribution. To regulate that, you have a steeper angle on the sealing area and a more shallow angle on the back pumping area. Yeah. So with an angle geometry, you can reach, let's say, a contact pressure distribution which allows you to transport oil. This is state of the art today. You can do it in polyurethane, you can do it in uh, PTFE. Still today, PTFE is not a self-sealing material. We need some uh, friends in the team. Mainly we have uh, elastomer energizers. Some use steel springs. Yeah? But you need some spring character towards, uh, let's say, this uh, seal. Now we come to, yes, a trellis board sealing system. Yeah? But uh, the principle, we have a primary seal. What is the job of a primary seal? To seal first primary, OK? Then we have a secondary seal, and the name again. 
to seal second. And we have a scraper. Yeah, if I look on, let's say, this uh, transportation of oil, I would prefer to have, let's say, a double action on the scraper too. So this is a double acting scraper who has, again, an additional sealing lip. So we have one, two, three sealing lips to prevent, let's say, oil to come out. Who takes care how many oil we will have on the secondary seal? Who takes care on how many oil we have on the scraper? The whole challenge on this system is to take care that no, no oil will be in front of the scraper. But in between, no management. We have, <laughs> we have uh, yeah, heroes, yeah? single heroes, but no management. Good. When we go into the systems, we do have this principle. Again, it's a fluor polymer seal, but uh, this is in principle the same with an elastomer or with a thermoplast. Yeah? It can be a polyurethane, can be a rubber. Uh, we do have this uh, distribution of the contact pressure, and we need the steep angle towards the pressure side and the shallow angle towards, let's say, the ceiling edge or the low pressure side to get this transportation. But we have no control. No control means uh, we do have situations in hydraulic systems where we come to limits. One very simple limit, and it's a physical limit, is the speed. Not the speed as such, but the speed in a ratio. Speed in a ratio, what is this guy talking about? Differences from out and in stroke velocity. If you look, let's say, on this very simple calculation, you see, let's say, the direct influence on the velocity. Direct. Yeah? So the faster I go, the thicker oil film I will create. If I am very fast on outstroke and very slowly on instroke, I will see a disaster. Because the ratio of the back pumping will be disorientated. Yeah? The relation, physical relation, is clearly to the speed. So every ratio which is faster out than in is a challenge for a sealing system. If you have only one seal, you almost cannot manage it, or you go back to history. <laughs> but then we don't talk on efficiency. Clear so far? What is that HA? Is that the velocity HA? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, this is a uh, German, yeah? A ausfahren, <laughs> I einfahren. Yeah? So it's out and in. Yeah? Looking on, let's say, a ceiling system. Again, in my family, we have uh, Bronxfield PTFE, and this is a ceiling system out of an application. Yeah? I would say this is a very nice and proud lifetime. Everyone is happy. Now I get this seal and look on it and say, no, no one can be happy on that. What do we see? We see a primary seal, primary, yeah? first, the first on the pressure. Worn out, not completely, but visible and measurable. We see a secondary seal, looking quite nice. In this sealing system, a little bit typical. The same first and the same second. From the load, completely different. If you look with some expertise on the second seal, you see something else. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe a little bit, yeah. The ceiling edge is not as sharp as it was uh, when we sold it to the customer. Which means that this secondary seal did live in the system over a very long period without any functionality. So there was no pressure on the secondary seal, pressureless sealing. A pressureless sealing seal 
if it's an O-ring energized uh, step seal, this has not really an orientation in the gland. Huh? So we will have maybe some deformation on the secondary seal. With deformation and some lubrication film from the first seal, I will pressure will have pressure on this uh, excluder. Huh? If I have pressure on an excluder first, the performance on the scraping will increase. But as a matter of fact, I will have some <coughs> deformation on the scraper lip, which you see here. A signal for, let's say, pressurization. And then you lose, over the time, the performance of the scraping due to the deformation. Yeah? So I have a primary seal who did really work well over a time. The secondary seal got the job then, but to that time, it was too late. He suffered over the time, hey? <laughs> over the time of, uh, let's say, uh, non-pressurized uh, conditions. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, we lost the functionality in destroying the scraper. So now we come to something new, <laughs> which we call lubrication management. And uh, all the things I said uh, is, let's say, nothing wrong today. It's still state of the art and everyone is doing like that. We like to do it different now. I call it the lubrication management and I split it into uh, different seal materials. We start with PTFE based seals as we did the history a little bit uh, related to PTFE seals, okay? Don't lose too much time. So again, we have, uh, let's say, the contact pressure distribution. We talk on sealing systems. What proportion of load do I put on the first, on the second seal, and maybe on the third one, which can be a double acting scraper? Just to give you a little bit of summary. <laughs> and uh, this contact pressure distribution to seal I now put upside down. Upside down means I do not want to seal hydrodynamically with the pressure loaded seal. I want to lubricate the most loaded seal to reduce the overall load on that. To do that, this is quite easy. Yeah? PTFE seal gets, let's say, a back pumping angle. I explained I need, let's say, this steep angle to have, let's say, a thin oil film. So if I don't want to have a thin oil film, if I want to have a well lubricated primary seal, I just do a shallow angle. Yeah? No space technology. <laughs> Quite simple. The effect is uh, very nice. Uh, yeah, the shallow angle will transport oil. Yeah? If I have a shallow angle, let's say to the pressure side and a shallow angle to the low pressure side, I do have a well balanced transportation. One thing, I still have no management again. So with my velocity ratio and a shallow angle, I will increase the oil film dramatically. So whatever I do then will transport oil maybe in the wrong direction and I can fill up uh, a volume between a primary and a secondary seal uh, quite rapidly. Filled up means the next step, pressurized. And then I have a pressurized secondary seal, so okay, not that uh, severe if this is a good seal, but I have an inverse pressurized primary seal. And this then can destroy a complete system quite fast. I've seen, let's say, uh, awful things where uh, even, let's say, co complete uh, areas of the seal were actually destroyed simply by pressure. So oh, no, we have calculated. This had to hold uh, 400 bar. Yeah, but then you had more than 400. How can that be? Easy, easy, easy. Okay, <laughs> uh, management means I need, let's say, then a primary seal who has 
additional to the seal technology, some <coughs> valve technology. Very simple again. We do have uh, a check valve in the primary seal, which allows, let's say, a pre-built up pressure to be balanced. Yeah? Check valve on PTFE seal, check valve on polyurethane seal, available, yeah? state of the art. Now I have a well lubricated primary seal, PTFE base, integrated check valve. What I need for all this system is always a secondary one. Yeah? Never alone because my film is too thick, yeah? too much oil. Then I have a second seal, which is a polyuren grade. Yeah? This is a L cup and uh, this is a IU9, a U cup, a lip U cup. Yeah? And uh, both the same material, yeah? 94 Shaw A polyurethane. Uh, standard, state of the art. Now you look, uh, let's say, on the discoloration on the uh, Knowing that this one will create a thicker oil film, the second one is polyurethane. What is good in polyurethane? No, 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 no. No. What is good in polyurethane? What is good in a polyurethane? If I need a low friction, the fluor polymer is always better. Yeah. Polyurethane is very wear resistant, yeah. extremely wear resistant, very flexible, easy to install, handling easy. Yeah? Polyurethane, good for dry running. Do I hear a yes or no? Dry running with polyurethane, who is in favor of that? I hope no one. So you will run into limits. So uh, polyurethane is no material which is capable to run without lubrication. So why shall I then put a secondary seal in polyurethane behind a sealing primary seal? Does that make sense? Not to me. Not to me. Not to me. So I need lubrication. If I want to see a lubrication on a polyurethane seal. Uh, we have uh, test machines in Stuttgart. We will see more on that later on. I look on the discoloration and with the discoloration on polyurethane, especially if I have no color master batch. So this is virginal. Yeah? The standard material simply without color. Yeah? And uh, I see exactly how much contact length I get and where I get contact with oil, which means lubricant. So this looks very nice. This L cup uh, is not on any limit of a lifetime. Neither this R U nine. Yeah, no extrusion, nothing. Very nice. And uh, we run it with three hundred and sixty bar over one million cycle, and we heat it up to eighty degrees C. So this is not an easy to run test. That's quite uh, heavy. Coming to the philosophy of this lubrication management in combination with an elastic secondary seal. So, U cups as secondary seal, very common. Yeah? Who, who has uh, experience with that? Yes, 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 some. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what do we take? as an argument to use a U-cup on secondary position. If you use it, you have some argumentation for that. Please don't say only because I have the proof to fit in. <laughs> Please not. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> if so, then maybe today we start to think <laughs> on, let's say, something senseful on a secondary seal. If I have, let's say, the idea on the lubrication management, I say, good, I, I, okay, I do a transportation of oil film. I bring more oil film to the secondary seal. Sometimes the space between primary and secondary is not that large. Sometimes the volume between the elements is not like a recommendation in the Trelleborg catalog. <laughs> Sometimes not. What can we do then? If we do have, for example, a longer stroke, 
we will have related to the stroke a volume which we transport. We have to compensate that somehow. So an accumulator is the answer. Yeah, to have any peak reduction in a hydraulic system, we use accumulator. Everyone knows that. Yeah? Very easy. So again, no rocket technology, <laughs> but just sinking in a ceiling system. Yeah? Sinking in it. So now I have my second ceiling. I have, let's say, a polyurethane material, and uh, I know that in some cases I will have a volume which come to the secondary seal, and uh, this means at the end I can pressurize the secondary seal. If the pressurize the secondary seal is too high, again I run into a problem with the secondary seal and maybe even with the primary seal because I have the inverse uh, pressurization. Now we look on some technology. This is a little bit FEA, deformation, and we see uh, from zero to 200 bar, let's say, installed secondary seals. If you look on the first line, this is a polyurethane compact seal. We call it RU2. Yeah. The second one is this RU9, a lip seal, and the third one is this L cup. What is the difference between these three types of a secondary seal? A shape, yeah, clear. Okay, I can see that. But uh, now, now, what is, uh, let's say, this idea on the accumulator? How do Flexible. I come to an accumulator? Flexible. Flexible. Yeah, yeah. And, and I call it, uh, let's say, groove filling degree behind the sealing edge. So, the more polyurethane I put behind the sealing edges, the less deformation, compression behavior I will have. The more freedom I have between these two, yeah, this whole area, the more travel deformation I can allow with the effect that this travel will be a pressure compensation. It's nothing else than an accumulator. It's a ring blade, or whatever you want to call it uh, in the hydraulic world. Again, this is extremely easy. Yeah? Fits in the same gland, but who is sinking in that direction? If I have only demand on, uh, I have to fill this gland with something, the second sentence behind that is then normally as cheap as possible. <laughs> Maybe you do not come on that. Okay. Coming to, let's say, some effects on this lubrication management. Uh, I promised in the title and in the synopsis a little bit uh, that we will improve sealing systems by far. So it's uh, marketing to do something like that. But behind the marketing, behind the clever marketing, normally you will have also some test results, properties, measurements, something technical, heart-based. Well, we come to some testing. And uh, we do friction testings uh, according to a standard in Trellibor Ceiling Solutions. We have uh, several sites uh, in the world. These results come from where I am situated in Stuttgart, Germany. And uh, we have a, uh, a test procedure which is split it in A to E in five steps. We do have, let's say, a friction mapping from 30 and 50 degree. Then we have an endurance test. Mapping is AB. C is endurance testing. And D is uh, corresponding to B and E to A. Don't be confused. It's uh, quite easy. Yeah? <laughs> Clear? The principle, we have an actuator, we have a chamber, we install the respective uh, seals in the chamber, and we pressurize the seals, always two, in a chamber. So the friction we measure is only the friction, yeah? the no hydraulics. It's balanced. We have the temperature of uh, 30 and 50 degree, and we use a uh, 46 centi stoke mineral oil. Yeah? 
state of the art European standard. Coming to the results, we have, uh, let's say, uh, a seal design, yeah, which is the same. We have a gland, which is the same. We have a rod, which is the same. We have a fluid, which is the same. We have a procedure, again, which is the same. And we only do the variation of the lubrication management in terms of taking the PTFE seal and changing the contact pressure distribution of this first seal from a steep to a shallow angle. Nothing else. The result. This is the standard seal, where we see now, let's say, the comparison from A to E. This was the first test at 30 degree, then we have 50, 50 degree endurance, 50 degree friction, and again, 30 degree friction. So A to E. We compare B to B and A to E, yeah, the longest distance. And then you see the influence on in running. Now so this is a sealing seal, yeah, where you see, let's say, the friction. Depending the, the, the colors, the meat, uh, this, uh, let's say, the pressure. So the highest uh, is the highest pressure. This is 200 bar. We go from 0 to 200, six steps. And we go from 0.01 meter per second to 0.4. This variation of speed normally covers the critical area of this uh, contact friction to the mixed friction to the hydrodynamic friction. Therefore, we do it like that. Same thing, same measurement, look on the results. And uh, the absolute value, this is one thing. The constancy on, let's say, that friction over the time, this is the more important thing. Why do I have such a tremendous constancy on that? The dotted line compared to the straight line. This is normal, yeah? the variation. Almost no variation here. Explanation for that? Please. Yeah. 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 I, I measure, let's say, not only the seal contact. I measure more or less, let's say, the oil. So this is constant. I have no influence over the time. All the influence is very much reduced. German talking, I can find a little difference, yes. <laughs> but in principle, yeah, this is very constant. Looking on this uh, in more detail, we have again, let's say, a seal profile. And uh, LM means lubrication management. And we combine it with a double acting scraper and with a single acting scraper. So this is the first loop of the endurance test. Again, don't be confused, but we have different colors. And the principal question, you can have a view on the graph, OK? This is fair enough. Uh, a double acting scraper. This is two lips, two lips with some nominal force in contact. A single acting scraper is one lip, right? So what has more friction, one lip or two lip? Two. Yeah, it's one more. Yeah? One and one is two. In principle, yes. But not in a sealing system. So if I think on, let's say, this lubrication management, on the team character of the single elements, now we look into the colors. We have a green one. We have a, hmm, I don't know this color. Yeah? brownish something, and the violet one. The single element is the lowest. Yeah? This is only the seal, but this is leaking, yeah? lubrication. Yeah? The second one is the one with the DA17, which is the double acting scraper. And the highest one is the single acting scraper. Look on the difference. Sing, single acting, double acting. From the miracle thing, this is uh, something on uh, 300 something, and there we have 600 something. Half. Simply 
with a double acting scraper. One lift more, reduce friction. Miracle? No way. En engineer from Germany. No, no. No miracles, yeah? No miracles. Yeah? It's very logical and very easy. With, let's say, the sealing lip, I can prevent, let's say, the lubrication for the backstroke. With the single acting scraper, I scrape the lubrication off. The better the scraper, the worse from friction. So, any idea on uh, why to use a single scraper? Not anymore. No. Talking on this and talking then on leakage. Lubrication management means I want to have the transportation in the system, but it means also I want to have, let's say, the transportation not outside. So let's say all customers buying hydraulic actuators inside, outside, working, yeah? no matter. They don't like, uh, let's say, drops on the floor, on the ground. They don't like these rings on uh, the rod. Sometimes we have it, yeah. And there's always a reason for it. Uh, but if you do this, uh, let's say, idea of the lubrication management in combination with the second element, yeah? this is again this double acting scraper, we can have, let's say, reduced friction and we can have reduced leakage, both together. Because uh, leakage is not a value on lubrication. My example from the difference from the double acting scraper to the single acting scraper shows that very clear. If I scrape off, it's wet outside, but it's too dry inside. So whenever we talk about lubrication, the indication of leakage uh, may be not the right way. Good. We are a little bit hard in time, but I promised half, so I will speed up. <laughs> uh, I did say the PTFE seals are very good in sliding properties. I did say also, and I did argue a little bit with you, uh, that uh, polyurethane maybe is not the best material for friction. So if I see what I showed you. Yeah? What is my next idea then? Additive. To adapt that to, let's say, seal materials, which uh, may be not optimum for, let's say, uh, friction properties. And then the family of the uh, thermoplast is, uh, let's say, the first one, you look on it. Yeah? So we talk on polyurethane-based lubrication management. Management means I need a check valve again. So this kind of primary seal is well known. Huh? You can have it in all colors. You can have it all over the world. Uh, most of the excavators have it. Uh, and in principle, we do have this durable sealing lip, polyurethane, easy installation. And uh, to get rid of, let's say, any gap extrusion, we fill in the uh, Forgive me to say plastic. <laughs> Backup ring. <coughs> can be a polyacetal, can be a polyamid, can be something um, modified in terms of higher temperature, can be a little bit filled with some ingredients, fillers, yeah? mainly glass. We know nylon, yeah? polyamid with glass. So this is how the world is doing that. And uh, yeah, again I say maybe. This is the world, but uh, I'm trying to work. I'm in the world, but <laughs> I try to uh, do the things better. So I say this is wrong, how this is done, because I have my lubrication management, so there is an edge. I have to take that off. If I do a backup ring with a lubrication management idea, I need a backup ring which is well lubricated. So I don't can have, let's say, a sharp edge inside. This must be round. In principle, all backup rings should look like that. Sometimes you help 
or some people help themselves in having, let's say, channels into these ones to improve the oil transportation. Normally a channel will not do it because uh, this can be blocked by some extruded polyurethane if uh, the load is too high. So this is the shape of this uh, lubrication management polyurethane. And uh, to show again some results, we jump from the friction to wear and uh, are now in an area of endurance testing. This is a mechanical crankshaft. And uh, we do, let's say, a very heavy test with uh, 400 bar over 200,000 cycles. And then uh, after that, another 200 bar for 300,000 cycles. We have a medium velocity because the speed here is a crankshaft. This is a sign movement from the signal. Uh, of 0.5 meter per second. And uh, the heavy thing on that is uh, we heat up the chamber. Yeah? We can heat the chamber, we can cool the chamber, we heat up to 100 degrees C. We still use the 46 oil, which is honestly speaking then close to the limit. Normally for that temperature you should uh, either go into a complete uh, other category, poly alpha olefin or you should go into let's say a higher viscosity but uh, you don't have this 100 degree all the time and if you have the higher viscosity and uh, you have temperatures like today <laughs> it's hot yeah? and if it's a little bit colder maybe your pump is broken or something like that ah. Looking on the systems, uh, we have the standard. This is a buffer seal according to the standard. This is this uh, L-cup as a secondary seal and this is a scraper. I don't want to promote this one. Yeah? But this is how it is. In a somewhere excavator. Yeah? And uh, again we look on the discoloration on the secondary seal. This is very short which means this seal did run dry. This did seal very well. We have this coloration, we have uh, scratches, we have marks on the backup ring. Heavy load, yeah? temperature, load, everything. We do the same test with the lubrication. We do have a little bit more discoloration. Nothing which is a problem for the secondary seal. And we have about nothing on the backup ring because we have the lubrication again also on the backup ring. Plastic. In this case, it was a polyacetal. 400 bar, 100 degrees C, this is very close to the limit. Polyurethane, discoloration, yes, because whenever I have oil contact with the polyurethane, I see the change of the pigment. So this is the discoloration. The result of that, we have a benchmark on, let's say, four seals. Uh, we take, let's say, the radial height, we call it W dimension. Take this value before we do the test and take this value after we do the test. Now we have some standard system from Trelleborg and some yeah, market seals. Uh, we do see, let's say, uh, quite okay values. Yeah? We have uh, 7 to 8 <coughs> percent change in the W per section, which means yeah, you see that the seal did run, it did suffer. This one is exactly the same one as that one. With the only difference of the lubrication management. Same material, same interference, same test. Again, all the same like we saw it with the PTFE. And with the polyurethane, this effect by reducing the load on the primary seal almost half on the opposite side is, let's say, the result that the lifetime expectation is contrary. Yeah? Double, if you want. Some more testings. If I know all that, I go into, uh, let's say, some challenges for polyurethane again. This is uh, slow speed and uh, short movement. Again, sign movement. It looks very not dramatic. Yeah? You say, ah, everything can run forever. No, no. <laughs> The challenge on that is the lubrication yeah, due to velocity and due to the short stroke. Limits on, let's say, this uh, 
lubrication then sometimes occur also in damages on the shaft. In this case, uh, this is a chrome painted shaft. After one million, you see the grinding marks, yeah? no, no impact. This is a microscope, a laser microscope, uh, where you can see, detect exactly, let's say, the change in the roughness. This is the sealing system with, uh, let's say, this uh, lubrication management, and uh, this is the roughness. A standard measurement where we do, let's say, uh, the measurement on the new rod, it's a good value, and the measurement in the contact of the secondary seal and on the primary seal. So you see almost no impact due to the lubrication. If we look again on the friction, the same test, we have the state of the art seal, yeah? not to make it the bad or something, but this is how it is. Yeah? And uh, we have a single seal, which is sealing, you see a sharp edge, and uh, you see, let's say, the graph with a maximum friction on, uh, let's say, 1,700. On this side, you have two elements with redundancy. Primary seal, well lubricated. Secondary seal, also lubricated. Not much pressurized because I have my management with the check valve functionality in the primary seal. Okay, this is unfair. I have some oil film also on this one, so I need to know, let's say, how this one works with the secondary seal. This is how German is thinking. Yeah? So what do we do then? We do the test again <laughs> and put the same seal on this one, and then we see what we expect to see. If we do not have the lubrication, we do add the dry running on the secondary seal just on top. If we do have the lubrication, we increase, decrease the load on the primary and decrease the load on the secondary. So both elements are in better condition. Knowing that, the next step is to enter, let's say, areas where all seals come to limits. This is uh, roughness. Yeah? We talk on tolerances, we talk again on costs, we talk on new technologies, new coatings, uh, whatever. Yeah? At the end, we always talk on the tribo system, the contact area between the seal and, let's say, the reciprocating relative movement part of the hardware. Standard, the typical wear marks, lubrication management, very nice. Putting everything together and have a delay of three minutes means uh, that uh, we are quite sure that with this lubrication management, with both material grades, but especially polyurethane, we just enter a complete new technology possibility. I have several, uh, let's say, uh, customers doing this already with success and uh, yeah. this is what I wanted to present here. <laughs> Thank you for the audience, it was the first session and uh,